Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome once again to yet another episode of Ground Zero Everyday Leaders. It's uh, episode number three of season two, and I'm your host, uh, Alan D'Souza, welcoming you once again to this very, very exciting and amazing evening. Uh, when I think about introducing the guest today, it reminds me of the quote uh, uh, by one of the motivational speaker uh, and a leadership speaker, John Maxwell, who says uh, leaders must uh, be close enough to relate to others. Leaders must be close enough to relate to others, but far enough to motivate them. You know, so it's a balance that John Maxwell is kind of quoting in this subject. He says, once again, I like to re-quote that. He says, leaders must be close enough to relate to others, but far enough to motivate them. And that is how I relate the gentleman or the guests we have today, uh, Mr. C.V. Nagarajan, the deputy, deputy CEO of uh, Datko Tenant LLC Dubai. And the reason I say that is I know Mr. Nagarajan uh, is very close. I mean, he does all that is necessary to stay close to his colleagues and counterparts and whoever is around him. And yet he has that little distance maintained just to kind of help him motivate uh, the others uh, working under him. And uh, I'm sure that is it. Even if Mr. Nagarajan disagrees, that's the personality I see uh, from the other side if I have to introduce him. So uh, Mr. Nagarajan, with that short little introduction, I would like to welcome you uh, to this show. Thank you, Alan. Um, what an excellent uh, introduction and makes me sort of you know, feel very shy of the screen now to say that we do such a very powerful uh, quote that you used on an ideal leader. Yeah. Thank you for that. No, I, I believe that absolutely fits into uh, the, the, the personality that you are, sir. And uh, I'm, I, we are honored to have you as a guest. So, uh, sir, I mean, you know, we, we speak about it. And then straight away, I would like to dive into that question about leadership itself and kind of probably ask you a question up front, which I've not done in other shows, mm -hmm. is what makes you who you are today? I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't want to use the generic word role model, but let's let's put it in a different way. What is it that makes you who you are today? Okay. The, most of it is uh, within yourself. In a sense, uh, you have this inner drive, you look at, like you said, role models and say, okay, there's nobody perfect I mean, in, in all aspects of life uh, at any given point of time that people are all learning and growing all the time. So it's uh, it's the inner drive that you see one, like for, my, for example, my dad, and I would say that self-discipline. So you, you learn and look at, uh, look up to him for that self-discipline. And if it was my patience and simplicity i would look up to my mother and, you know, unconditional love and service for humanity you can say i look up to my wife who is very very passionate about uh, helping people emotionally she works with the art of living as foundation and she's a teacher too and similarly you know, in terms of uh, Employment, I, I would say, yeah, there are so many role models. My first uh, boss, and if I, may, I normally don't use this term boss, <laughs> the leader that uh, I was working with uh, had belief in me. I mean, that's that in itself, you know, for all of us, somebody else has more belief in your abilities than yourself at that right. point of time. So this is the kind of... Uh, inspiration that you get, which helps you to always aspire for, uh, for a better quality of, uh, you know, life, if it's whether it's career or personal life uh, relationships, I would say. So that, that's what, uh, and I, you know, I'm, all the time I'm keen about learning. So reading is something that I take up uh, wherever, uh, these days it's more online and so a lot sometimes. It's it's for for me. I find role models all over. All over. I mean, nothing particular. One. It is not just one aspect. In each aspect, you would find somebody is so good at, and so uh, that's how I get inspired to become that in that aspect. Right. But in fact, it reminds me of uh, 
uh, you know, the, our last guest, you know, he kind of quoted as the situation of the circumstances also around you kind of acts as a role model. And I, I was really kind of uh, impressed with that. And I'm sure the situation around you has also driven to where you are today, uh, right from your days in Chennai and uh, till this point and leading one of the one of the most recognized groups in, in the UAE and in fact, all around the world probably. And and that's uh, that's a journey, isn't it, sir? True, absolutely. Can't right. just, uh, agree more. I mean, this is something that uh, situational leadership itself is a terminology these days uh, as a buzzword. And yes, uh, we are all uh, leaders in different situations and we learn uh, through those situations, the way we handle that, the way we overcome those challenges and uh, may perhaps even sometimes allow others to overcome those challenges. So it's, it's quite a... Well, I, I kind of picked up in the, the words that you you mentioned earlier, you said learning is something that never stops and you you as well want to, uh, you, you have a desire to learn every day. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's what drove you towards getting into a, an admission to a management school Pretty yeah. much in a, in a, in a, at a time when you're very much settled in your in your job, not just settled, you're actually running the show, and yet you chose to study. Yeah, true. Uh, I mean, learning as a, I mean, you either grow or die. There is no standstill. You know, you, you must have heard that kind of quotes that uh, people have made. It's uh, that kind. Mean, even uh, as I said, uh, I started a polytechnic education and. Uh, you feel you're not enough. I mean, for whatever reasons, uh, I mean, there's nothing belittling the education, but it is just a feeling that, you know, in a society, you said, oh, you need to be a graduate. So you, when I took up this job, uh, I did my evening course learning for uh, what's uh, called as AMIE, the Institution of uh, Engineers in Calcutta. They do a chartered engineers course. So that was also an evening learning while the work was going on with this company, Best in Compton, where I was in export. So similarly, uh, as time passed on, you, you learned, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, that That kind of le learning was uh, very much within me. So when I, even after, uh, like you said, having some managerial roles, team leadership roles, I thought it would be interesting to learn what's contemporary views on leadership. Or, I mean, it was more around strategy, the kind of uh, education that I took with Strathclyde in uh, uh, Glasgow University. But they had their uh, classes here in British Council in Dubai. And so that was a evening class and weekend class. So it took quite a lot of commitment also. So that, that was something, again, as I said, you have, one has to be disciplined when it, if you want to learn. So you have to give it the time and uh, effort to learn. And it, it came through uh, more as a, uh, my earlier leader used to say, Ian Mack, uh, who was the CEO of the company, said uh, we benefited a lot out of that, uh, that kind of uh, you know, classes that you attended and the program that you went for uh, meant a lot of benefit for uh, the company in, in, in the way we uh, change the outlook of uh, the company. So these are his words. So um, I mean, I, I, I'm proud that it came from a very important person that was running the company at that time. No, uh, absolutely, sir. And I think that very much goes down in line to the team that you lead as well. I mean, primarily, I'm sure you have a lot of energy spent on, uh, on, on kind of, uh, you know, strategically thinking about how to grow your team in mm. terms of learning themselves. I mean, you know, whether it comes in form of uh, leadership courses or motivational courses. So how important do you, do you suggest that training and, and or rather, you know, learning and development is in, in the corporate world? I mean, how, what's the place? I mean, is it a part and parcel? Do you, do you see it as a part and parcel or do you see it as an, a, a kind of a, a, an attached uh, you know, attached uh, stream that has to walk along with uh, the corporate world. Mm, mm, true, true. I mean, well, the question was, if I understand, uh, saying how important is training and development? And needless to say, there is no, it's a no-brainer question, really. I'm sorry, I mean, no offense, but what I'm saying is, there no, cannot be a disagreement with that. I mean, if uh, you want to grow, you have to learn. 
Absolutely. They, even if it's learning from your mistakes, it's not about your, uh, you know, a program, a, a course that you attend to. Uh, learning is, uh, I mean, all around from our life situations. We sp- talked about situational leadership from our own life situations, so learning and formal learning. And there is, these days there are podcasts and things like that. What you're doing now for uh, uh, your uh, you know, students that where you, they inspire them to learn about relationship building and leadership. And there's absolutely no question about uh, the place where learning belongs to. It, it's definitely a very, very important part of uh, yeah. one's development. I must say. Yeah. No, absolutely, sir. Well, uh, let me now go back to the early days, uh, Ms. Nagarajan. I mean, how did your early days kind of go and, and if you can shed a little bit of light, because I always relate that to a person you know, when he arrives at his later stage and there is some sort of a link or a relationship out I normally see. And uh, I, I feel the early days plays a very important and a key role. True, true. I mean, the background or I mean, as we call it, uh, where you come from, so that that's, um, definitely has a connection in how we think, how we relate to people. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I'm from a small family in terms of when I say small, my dad, my mom, and my sister. We have, I have an elder sister with uh, quite a you know inspirational person in terms of uh, learning, speed of learning, and uh, being always a challenge to catch up with her. And so it, it was always a comparison to say she was a class topper, school topper, and college topper, and all of that. You know, it's quite challenging to be that. I mean, mine was more. Uh, I'm as an average student in term, if you want to use the gradation and ranks as the criteria to in, in the class. And so I, we were we were living in Chennai most of the time. My life has been besides Dubai. I have lived uh, all the time in Chennai. Um, so we grew up in Chennai. It was a, a small school at that time called Christ King Convent, where uh, we were up to the primary school. We had the foundational values both in terms of uh, life values as well as uh, I think English as a language uh, for communi- communication foundations were very strong in that place and uh, I'm, I'm grateful that you know that that was an important uh, learning period for us and then subsequently it was uh, a school nearby in, say, in, uh, in a place called Tambaram in Chennai uh, Corley High School, where I did my schooling till grade 10. We were the first batch when grade 10 was introduced, as a school final was introduced in Tamil Nadu. And this was in 1978, I think. So there's this, and subsequent uh, to that, uh, because as I qualified earlier saying, uh, the, being an average student and you'll have to fight the uh, system in uh, getting your merit quota, if you like. So my dad decided it's uh, you would be better off uh, not taking up the first batch plus two because plus two was quite a tough one at that time. As, and with everybody was new, even the teachers were new in the school how, in terms of how to take up the syllabus and run with it. So he chose uh, Polytechnic as a route for me. And I'm grateful for that decision also that that helped. I did my mechanical engineering in uh, Polytechnic and when, when I came to the Polytechnic, the, the reason I touched on language earlier uh, and I was in the kind of second list, if you like, you know, the first list was over and then uh, you have this uh, residual capacity a little bit was what was not taken up by the first list. To get them. So uh, when I got into the class, it was like A, a is the best class and E or F would be the kind of uh, in, in, in marked gradations. <laughs> It, it was pulled up like that, and uh, but the the communication ability within the classroom made me quite a what do you call it, something that I started believing in myself because people the the, the lecturers there were quite uh, you know appreciative of my participation in the discussions in their questions and answers and this they felt there was uh, this person was. Uh, somebody that need to be taken notice of when that when when that happens and as i said earlier when somebody else believes about you more than what you believe in yourself then it it, it sort of uh, 
takes in and inspiration sets in and uh, I was one in ten among the whole A to F batch and so I had a choice to pick up right. the engineering that I wanted. So you know, those days electronics and uh, mechanical instrumentation, these were uh, the campus uh, top ones. So I picked up that and uh, so I, I, I would say that that was the kind of educational background in terms of it. And it's a small family. My dad was in railways. My uh, he was in uh, the central station in Chennai, and my he was more in accounts. Uh, when he when he retired, it was about ten years of uh, what do you call work that he did in uh, central station accounts. For, uh, my mom was a school teacher for a long time, primary school teacher. A small family there. Right. No, uh, you know, it's right what we say about education in India, although it's evolving very slowly and it's getting to where we actually want it to go. But it's uh, sometimes very hard to digest to the fact that, you know, we are ourselves required to find the talent within us. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, probably you're very late in, in, in the education system. Uh, mm-hmm. But something I think we should, uh, or right, rather is, something which is evolving now is to groom talent at a very young age, even whether it's con- whether, whether it is uh, pertaining to education or sports. But uh, finally, I think we are getting there. I would, I would imagine that leading a corporate from a small family that you came from mm-hmm. to now leading a corporate of, of such a large, uh, uh, y- y- you know, extent, uh, you have a big team to kind of lead. How do you how do you manage that? Well, uh, you, earlier on you mentioned about being close enough and at the same time being far enough. Uh, so uh, I don't know that our people need management. What they need is uh, inspiration and uh, demonstration of uh, what do you call more by action, more by doing them seeing us what. Uh, they have done so they don't really need much management and are I mean you must have also heard that uh, as a leader your job is first to create more leaders in the sense that uh, so that's what has happened in that continent and I, we, I may not have consciously set out and said I'm going to develop 100 leaders but it happens by the way we uh, deal with people, by, by the way they come up and by, by the way we demonstrate appreciation about their, by the way we notice and the way, way we, we encourage curiosity and uh, you know, asking them to make those decisions. You know. uh, traditionally, we expect the leaders to uh, solve problems, let's say what? Uh, imagine if uh, teamwork means uh, more problem solvers. I mean, if, if, you, if you can recruit and develop and uh, have more problem solvers, and then perhaps you, you don't need it and you can be far enough, like you said, you know, in terms of uh, giving them the room to be solving the situation challenges that they are facing. So teamwork is yes, absolutely uh, it's happening and all the time we, we can't imagine anything uh, beyond one person, there is there is teamwork that is required. You know, so the moment you are more than one, uh, you you need team. Uh, no, I, I and uh, I I think that you're absolutely uh, right in suggesting and saying that. And and I've had the first hand experiencing uh, experience rather of working with some of your colleagues. Uh, you know, right from whether it is uh, Nandish Kulkarni in the past, yeah. Ravi Venugopal, and and then Chandra Mohan and. Yeah. Pavan Shetty, I mean, the list goes on and I'm sure there's plenty of leaders Absolutely. and uh, that is what I find. And then that's the beauty of that Kuten. And I think uh, leaders evolve out of leadership and uh, yeah. it's amazing to see a talent pool of uh, leaders. And I'm sure you attribute uh, every success to uh, the team that, that works together and then, and then that's exactly what it is, right? Yeah, without doubt, without doubt. They, 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 these are the people who come up and you named a few and there are a lot more uh, of them, like you rightly said. And uh, these are the people who make it happen uh, because they believe in themselves and we we start noticing their work and we uh, give them the feedback that what they did very well and then build up that uh, uh, you know good feel that, yeah, they, we encourage that in, in, in any... In any uh, situation that through feedback 
that's something that I found that people raised the occasion. They all start believing in themselves and make those decisions. And we would make some mistakes and we would learn from that, correct that. And when the next opportunity comes up for uh, making decisions, and they don't shy away because they made some mistakes. Or, uh, they definitely look up to the learning there and move on and make better decisions. Now we all we all learn from our mistakes and and then grow. So well said, sir. And and sir, I it, it does not limit you from just working with your team. I mean, Dutco Tenant is known to be hosting principles of uh, companies from all over the world and yes. some some excellent excellent uh, brands that you carry under your flagship. Uh, mm-hmm. And that must be uh, another uh, separate spectra of challenge by itself. To kind of you know, working with, all, with, with these international companies, uh, you know, bringing them, grooming them to understand the local needs uh, and local challenges and, 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 yet, uh, and yet working together to make it successful. Mm-hmm. So what has been that learning for you when it comes to working with international partners? Mm-hmm. Very... Uh... It's relationship building. That is first is uh, whether it is your people in the organization or whether it's your customer or your principals who are kind of feeding you with the products and technology and uh, availability, making it competitive enough and demonstrating the interest to be in the region, in the market. These people, uh, if you understand what is in it for them, what is their, uh, what's important for them, and uh, make sure that that is heard and also put your, uh, and remain dependable, remain a a reliable partner that they would uh, look up to and say, I mean, even uh, Middle East, I think in the old days had some, uh, what do you call, uh, people from uh, the manufacturing side would look at uh, it as a risk in terms of uh, payment and the method of, uh, you know, Reaching them. So once you demonstrate that you are a dependable person, that you pay on time, you give them factual updates on uh, feedback on the ground, and uh, may uh, make uh, you know re- re- remain loyal to them through uh, the trust that you develop between the parties. I mean, trust is another very very. Uh, I mean, it appears a simple word and it's built over a period of time and di- di- different situations. And we, we've developed that uh, trust in a way that they feel they are in the safe hands and they would uh, actually encourage us to go beyond UAE. And that's how also our uh, you know, ability to go and uh, be present now in almost all the uh, Gulf countries. And this comes through the relationships that our people have built. Uh, each one of them, uh, you know, can bring in relationships with that. And uh, like you know, for the customer, when they close their eyes and think about our company, they think only your face, the salesperson, the first person, that, that's the one that comes up. That's the company. Similarly, on the other side, for principals also, when, when they think about their distributor or agent, they think about these people whom they have come across. It is, it's not a logo, it's not a corporate that they think of. So that's the relationship and trust that our people have uh, managed to establish. With these no, I'm, I've, I've experienced that firsthand uh, being one of your principles uh, during my past uh, working life. And, and I think uh, you're absolutely spot on. It was, uh, it was those individuals who made the difference. Uh, certainly, the brand and the the logos they all yeah. matter. They carry they carry the required weight. Uh, but what really matters on ground are uh, the people, the legs on the ground, as they call them, the soldiers, as yeah. we call them. So uh, certainly, uh, I think you paid you paid your uh, your due respect to them by just evaluating in these kind so, words that you just projected, sir. Um, uh, you know, one one question which is very dear to me, especially when I thought about this interview and where you are presently dwelling, the Emirates, uh, the United uh, Arab Emirates and uh, Dubai in particular, an amazing, amazing city, a place of visions, a place of a place which, you know, it's the Mumbai of UAE somewhat, right? Uh, makes people, breaks people, but yet uh, delivers in the end. And uh, it's certainly a place of visions. Um, and uh, UAE surely would have been 
a country providing uh, you know the platform for that co-tenant as well in Absolutely. many ways uh, because you did mention about expanding to the gulf but the nucleus uh, or the, uh, where it all started was the was the emirates so True. how would you how would you attribute the the country's contribution to the success of the company sir yeah without without doubt the country's development plans the vision of the leaders at uh, the country level uh, whether it's dubai or abu dhabi uh, whole of the emirates you, you find their vision for development and making sure that this is a place where uh, people would want to invest in 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 therefore infrastructure the importance of infrastructure being um, uh, realized very well and lot of funding that were that has gone into developing the infrastructure of the country i, I would say was uh, a key part of the development that happened here so this is something that has uh, helped us because our strength has been in terms of product leaderships uh, that uh, we had very very strong product portfolio over, over a period of time we developed that and this is all around infrastructure whether it was water sewer irrigation telecom and even education as a, a infrastructure if you like in terms of uh, the institutions that have come up here both for higher education and as well as research and development uh, education uh, institutions these have been uh, and construction of course maybe dubai is and the country is very well known for uh, the various landmark projects that oh, we yeah. have like the woods the uh, woods khalifa or uh, even the dubai mall and so many so many projects now the expo uh, and all, all of this as a, as a combined on the vision the speed of decision making i i felt that's something that this country offered us uh, to uh, develop faster as as an organization i would say we we found our niche in infrastructure right and when we provide the right services and products uh, they were quite receptive and uh, there is no bureaucracy uh, of any anything that hinders business you know, all the time it's one that supports business and i i find that as an important part of uh, our development reasons yeah no it reminds me it's kind of a flashback uh, to the nine, late 90s when i stepped into the uae and my first taxi drive on a patan taxi to uh, to to abu dhabi from dubai uh-huh. uh, and i i we just passed by the uh, I, i think it was the uh you know the building with the guitars the, the, the it was the rock not the rock bottom it was uh hard rock cafe hard rock cafe yeah. the hard rock cafe was one of a milestone building at the end <laughs> of dubai uh, leading towards abu dhabi and we thought that's the end it was all d- desert after that give it a few years i wouldn't i wouldn't say probably even 5 or 6 years mm. things absolutely changed i had to actually search for the hard rock cafe every time i passed by that road mm. you know so, such is the amazing development that the country has seen especially in construction uh, truly truly hats off to the leaders so, uh, yeah. and sir i would like i would like you to throw light on uh, what would you consider as as the highest point in your career um one thing which, which which definitely comes to my mind on as a highest point would be uh uh you heard of i, I think i mentioned this name before ian mac yeah. you know, who was our um, ex ceo and there were um, this is when in in that content when uh, mentioned that he, he's not a person that he takes uh, credit for many things you know like uh, is somebody who is uh, quite happy to give credit for other people as you know as a true uh, leader so he said this this one thing naga i want to take credit for is to making the decision to recruit you and you know it coming from a person of that uh, role and somebody who my was a very dear friend of mine he retired uh, in 2019 and so i considered that as a it came much later it, i mean all the time it, uh, of course the he gave encouraged me a lot throughout my uh, period uh, 
But that one statement, I, I felt, was a huge statement. It made me feel very uh, uh, high about uh, you know myself, and uh, I felt good about it. That was uh, I would consider. But going back the early stages in uh, life in India, when I was in Western Counter again, uh, the belief in the leader uh, in 1986, I think it was. I was about 23 or something, and. Uh, I was uh, nominated to travel for export promotion. I mean, in, in the 80s, traveling abroad to Europe, Australia, Far East, and this, this was a big thing. For, for me, that was a great recognition. So it was, a, it was also a large organization. So it was a huge buzzword that this guy who just uh, joined a few years ago is now having all the... I mean, and it was seen more as a perk rather than a role. In, for us, it was a role. Uh, for many people outside, it was uh, so. It was. I mean, I felt elated at that time also. So that was also another high point in the early uh, career, which obviously gave me a lot of uh, exposure to international marketing and relationship building there. Yeah. No, you kind of reminded us about uh, Abdul Kalamji's uh, incident as well. He he narrates the story wherein uh, you know his boss uh, during one of the greatest missions. Uh, credits a lot of the success of that particular project to sure. the team uh, when there was a success. But when there was a failure before that event, he uh, owned that failure. Sure. But uh, he gave the success to uh, uh, Abdul Kalamji and his team when, uh, when, uh, when the project took off. Sure. Uh, so such was uh, so- something that you mentioned about Sir Ian, yes. whom uh, I'm sure yeah. you hold very high in your, yes. uh, in your personal yeah. life. So... Uh, sir, um, you know, we, uh, we have talked about Dubai, we talked about the events that make Dubai what it is. One of the events that really uh, stands out, and I know uh, Dutko Tenant is, is a shining star when it comes to this particular event, is the Big Five show. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a huge show in terms of construction, water, whichever yeah. subsidiary industries we talk about, but yeah. you guys take that show pretty seriously. Yeah, true, true. Big five for us was, um, in, 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 I think somewhere in uh, 2019, uh, they had their 40th year celebration and uh, we had our 40th year celebration too. So they came up and they said, you've been there with us for a long time and perhaps throughout the uh, years that, um, it, it was a once in two years, I think. Wow. And then it became an annual uh, event subsequently. Yeah, for us, Big Five show was more, uh, I, I, would, I would see it as an opportunity to look for new principles and for new principles to look up to us. I mean, besides, this is all besides the routine uh, business of you know, meeting customers, finding uh, uh, some people whom you have not met for a long time or uh, principals who come here and sit and spend time with us in the stall. Uh, but this, uh, for us, uh, Big Five was more of a statement of, here is an industrial distribution company who is uh, part of a large group, reliable and having multiple dimensions of uh, industries that they uh, work in and uh, Will it fit me? For, for, for an aspiring principal, they would come up and wanting to uh, find a relationship with us. And I also find many of these uh, commercial attaches, like the, the trade offices these, uh, these days, as they call it, they, they come up and also uh, canvas for uh, manufacturers from their countries and they recommend because they know uh, our local presence, the size, the reputation that we have, the industries we cover. Uh, the, the, this has been one of uh, a, a great image builder, I would say, for us. Big Big Five show. It has the right. We, we, it's not a transactional business that you you know the dollars that you sell there, but we do the foundation for that. So the, the relationship foundations are laid through that type of uh, events for us. It's an important event in the Middle East, and it's very well attended all over, as you know. Anybody wanting to know something about what's happening in construction, make sure that they are visiting the show. Yeah, so no, I, think, I think UAE has been a birthplace for all these major events. 
Yeah. Uh, you talk about the Adipex in Abu Dhabi. You talk about the Gitex. Gitex. Uh, so you know, it such has been the country a platform for for launch of uh, massive events and a role model for the rest of the Gulf countries. So hotel, hotel, Gulf food, hotel show. These are all you know very big events that happen here. Yes, but uh, we are coming close to a very very important event, the Dubai Expo. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still call it 2020, isn't it? And uh, yeah. You know, uh, wow! Has the pandemic played its part? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then again, Dubai's resilience. Yeah, they they are ready now. And uh, I think yesterday it was saying we are ready for the world. Was the uh, caption in the newspapers here? And His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid was there to inspect the com- I mean readiness of uh, the place. And yeah, we are all excited. And yeah. uh, again, we we as a company that put in and participated in a lot of uh, uh, in terms of uh, one was there was one that I can quickly think of is the seating. Of course, the early stages a few years ago, the infrastructure, the water, sewerage, irrigation, landscaping, uh, telecom, that kind of infrastructure, uh, product supplies for those uh, applications for the whole expo itself, and off late uh, low voltage systems. like lighting control intercom public address that those type of systems that we have had in specific uh, stalls within the expo and seating was the was the latest one that we had certain uh, one of the expo halls have have our uh, stadium type of seating that we offer so we are very proud for that we have been uh, as that put and i'm sure the larger group that co has had several other uh, contributions but as that co and uh, our products are all part of expo so very very excited about the even next month yeah fantastic sir uh, as we coming closer to the end of the show uh, i would like you to uh, provide uh, your thoughts or rather let's say your advice uh, to the youth something that uh, is very important to this uh, particular show that we host uh, uh as frequent as frequently as we can but uh, one of the primary reason we do this uh, show uh mr nagarajan is to inspire the young and uh, people like you is where they take a leaf out of uh, and then and i i imagine that these uh, conversations go a long way and uh, remain etched in their lives uh, so what would be that advice that you would want to give uh, to today's youth important responsibility and i uh, congratulate you for uh, you know making this effort for being uh, helpful for those aspiring uh, children whether it was the university or uh, schools for me uh, uh, my uh, advice would be uh, for these people self discipline as absolutely but I mean, you just have to sorry it's a check on yourself uh, that you whatever i'm doing now is it taking me towards where i want to be so that action you have to keep correcting yourself and so self discipline is introspection i mean obviously is a process that you can uh, follow that what did i do today to move towards my aspire aspiration so that because every discipline affects everything else each discipline whether it's your eating discipline your uh, you know health discipline your activity discipline your studies discipline what, what whatever that you want to become you know even if you're a sports personality whatever you want to become it's important each one each habit affects the other so be very very uh, careful what becomes your habit and use self discipline use your know, introspection as your uh, as tools to get closer to where you want fantastic well mr nagarajan thank you so much for those uh, very mo- motivating words and i'm sure uh, there will be many who will be watching this show uh, who will get that leaf that we were talking about and uh, walk away with that uh, uh, with an advice of self discipline which i believe is one of the most uh, most important thing to kind of make any individual successful not just the youth even at a later stage it plays a very important role but if you start early yeah. one can imagine where that person would go and i think uh, to the audience and especially you youth who are watching this interview today please take that advice uh, i wouldn't say seriously but take it as a as a life learner 
uh, self-discipline will take you places. And we have all learned it from experience. We've all learned it over years. Imagine if you pick it up at an early age, you guys have made uh, a change in your life straight away. In fact, you have made your career right there. Uh, so with that, we conclude tonight's uh, episode of uh, Ground Zero Everyday Leaders. It was wonderful talking to you, uh, Mr. C. V. Nagarajan, an inspiration for so many around. And uh, you know, the quote I kind of would like to end with tonight is, uh, effective leaders are, are, are made and uh, not born, right? They, they learn from, from trials and errors and from experience. And I think that kind of summarizes your life, sir. Uh, you know, you've been successful today but I'm sure there are so many experiences that have contributed to where you stand. And, uh, and, and, and the greatness of any individual such as yourself is you give back and, uh, and, and you, you enjoy the, the, the fruits of what you give back. And, and thank you very much for, for empowering the world and being a contributor. Uh, not just you, I'm sure it's, as you rightly said in, uh, earlier during the conversation, your entire family, your wife in particular, also do just that. So congratulations uh, from all of us at Ground Zero, Everyday Leaders and the Leadership Studio uh, Institute. So Mr. Nagarajan, it was wonderful, wonderful talking Thank to you. you tonight. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for choosing me for this event. And I'm grateful for everybody who has helped me to become what I am. Uh, it's uh, uh, def definitely it's, uh, something that I enjoyed today being here and sharing what I knew a little. Thank you for choosing. Thank you for making our evening beautiful. Thank you. God bless. Bye. God bless. And surely for me, this has been an evening of utmost learning and an evening that I, I enjoyed spending with Mr. C.V. Nagarajan, the Deputy CEO of Datko Tenant, a client-centric, a customer-centric organization that has gone big in the Middle East and I'm sure it is because of personalities and individuals such as Mr. CBN who bring in the value of teamwork, who bring in the principle of, of giving the best to your family and yet being a professional to the core when it comes to serving the organization. It has been a memorable evening for me. I hope you all enjoyed it and I request you to continue following, subscribing to our channel as our learning and our journey continues.